So um, <clears throat> the theme for the month is transcending karma. That's a pretty significant or really important um, concept or an idea. In the Western world, I would say in particular, people have been fed this idea of what freedom is. That ultimately freedom means that I can do whatever I want, whenever I want. I am not bound by rules or things that interfere with my pursuit of pleasure and happiness. And if I are in that situation and I have the facility to do anything I want whenever I want, it's kind of like, wow, the ultimate state of freedom. But to people from much older cultures, that's a really very childish idea. Sorry. That's like really not, a, not very thoughtful. And the reason is that there is this very profound awareness of these natural laws. One of these natural laws is the law of karma. The word karma, it literally means action. People normally associate karma with the good or the bad result of action, the fruits of action. But the word karma just relates to action. And there was this understanding um, we see it within Christianity to some extent. People embrace the idea of as you sow, so you shall reap. And whatever seeds you put in the ground, that's the plant that will grow. That's what you will be having to, that's what you will be confronted with. And this is the reality, that whether you agree or not, and it's not a question of belief or anything, there is a fundamental reality that you are accountable for your actions. You are accountable. The result of your actions you cannot escape. And for every action there will be a reaction. And because of that, people encounter things that are sort of like, they may seem to come out of left field or out of nowhere. Things that come uninvited or unintended. The consequences of previous actions come to visit us. And we have to then deal with the result of that. In the ancient yogic teachings, they accepted the, and, and there was this understanding that I am an eternal spiritual being. This particular body I have on now is not actually who I am. This is just temporary clothing. And you will see that everybody, when it comes to birth, there's no equality. Different people are born in different circumstances. The nature of the body you have, the level of health, the level of what's called beauty or strength, the level of intelligence, the economic status that you are born into, the different opportunities that come as a result of these different births. 
have all been attributed in the ancient yoga text to karma, past karma. What we harvest, what we reap, is the result of these. And so in ancient times, there was this pretty strong awareness and this idea that if I want good stuff to happen to me, if my, I want my life to be really good, then I've got to do good things. I have to act in a way that produces these results. And that's just an amazing idea because it means that we are responsible for our happiness. We are responsible for the type of life, the quality of life we are going to have. It, it lies within our hands. It, it is our choices that bring about these results. And so you will see in, in the ancient cultures, there was this like huge focus on living in, in, in a quite um, almost strict manner in terms of the do's and the don'ts. There was this great awareness, if I do bad stuff, I'm going to really be unhappy and I'm going to suffer. You know, I, I've mentioned before we do uh, meditation pro and mindfulness programs in, in the Auckland prison. And this is one of the, you know, first things that we talk about to um, people is that the need to be very much aware and to accept responsibility for where you are. People may think that, okay, if I, don't, if I do something wrong and I don't get caught, then it's all cool. And the answer, of course, is no. That even if you're not supposedly caught, you will carry this load that will actually shape your thinking and shape your life experience. And it will have an effect on your decision making and every harm that you cause will come back to visit you. Um, you. There's no free ride. There's no free lunch. You pay for everything. And so there was this real, quite intense awareness. People lived by certain value systems. They tried to operate in certain ways, the, the larger population, because they desired what was considered good outcomes. And people that chose not to make that kind of conscious choices, but instead tried to take shortcuts, who acted in criminal fashion, in hurtful and harmful ways, there were consequences to that. But there's one really big problem with this type of understanding. This type of understanding does not take into consideration the reality of material life or material existence. If, and I'll give you an example that I've used before, if so, you know, and, and it's just like all over the place in Asia and Africa and, you know, some of the third world countries where you'll see in the cities, you can see somebody at a traffic stop and a light sitting in a Mercedes Benz and maybe in front they've got a driver and they're sitting back there with their iPad doing their work or whatever they're doing. And then knocking at the window is some person in tattered clothing, very thin and even emaciated or sick, and they're begging at the window. And the average person would look at that, and if they were a little sensitive, 
they would feel great pity for the person that's impoverished and famished and knocking at the window and begging. The great transcendentalists, though, they had another vision. They would look at that situation and see the wealthy gentleman in the Mercedes Benz and the person knocking at the window as being in exactly the same situation. Because they're not looking at just that moment in time. They are looking at a continuum. That as long as a person is entangled in material life and material existence, then it is only a question of time before these two individuals change places. Probably not in this lifetime, maybe in another lifetime. But they will definitely change places. Just by the laws of karma, there will be this changing of situations. And so to spend all of your time and energy invested on trying to create what you might consider to be a heavenly or luxurious existence, and in that you will find great happiness and perfection, is a wrong idea. It doesn't work that way. That is a fantasy. So it's very much like the, a, the ugly reality. We've talked about the good and the bad in relation to karma. And that's based on people's perception. Oh, if I have all the goodies, if I have all this good stuff, therefore I will be happy. There will be some perfection in my life. No, I'm sorry, not like that. You can have everything and be profoundly unhappy and even suicidal because there is no actual connection between true happiness and physical stimulation, sensual pleasures, and happiness are not the same thing. They're distinctly different. So the bad news, the very ugly truth, is that if you have two people locked in a dungeon, like in the olden days, and they're both chained to the wall, and one guy's chained by these wonderful golden chains, gold and silver, and it's just like, he's just so proud that look at this, whew, and looking over at the other guy, and the other guy's just got like rusty old chains, and he's feeling all sad because of his lamentable condition of just having rusty chains. The other guy's feeling so proud, just look at these, whew, the bling. From the perspective of the transcendentalist, they see that one person who is tied to this world by the results of good karma, by all of these what's considered enjoyable experiences, and the person who is tied by these rusty old chains and he's got a load of bad karma, they're both in the same place. They're both in the same place. They're both in the same dungeon. And from the perspective of the, of the great yogis, they would see everyone that is entangled and tethered by the laws of karma to be in an unfortunate circumstance. Both are considered undesirable. It is not that one is more desirable than the other. Both are undesirable. And so the focus of these great saintly teachers was that a person needs to learn how to become free from the effects or the results of karma. And that's just like, wow, how do you do that? when every action that you perform has a reaction. 
that reaction will come as a counter to whatever you've done. But it, there's something deeper than that. Every time you engage in activity, it begins to condition your thinking. It's like somebody who's addicted to social media or they've got, you know, there's this amazing thing I read. It's called Harpooned by Facebook. L look it up. It's a good read where they talk about people that go on social media and you've got these tech companies who are harvesting information about individuals who have more of a predisposition towards addiction. More of a predisposition towards addiction in the form of, of drugs and alcohol, but also specifically gambling. And then they begin to target those. That information is sold to these companies who then pay Facebook to target these individuals with certain types of applications and you know experiences and things and get people into online gambling and in these online gambling they it's not called gambling because you don't win money you can only win chips but to play with chips you have to buy them if you haven't won any and so you are spending money. And so people have been losing tens of thousands, even hundreds of thousands of dollars as a result of these addictions. It's just completely mind-blowing. But then they can't give up. They can't put it down. And they've found the same thing in, in other forms of social media usage. If you're spending more than three hours a day on social media, you will be more unhappy, unfulfilled. You will tend to be depressed. You may manifest symptoms of aggression or anger outbursts at people as a result. And even when you know this is happening to you, to become free from all this emptiness and anxiety or anxiousness what do they do? They spend more time on social media. <laughs> the thing that's causing the problem, they go to for the solution. So this is, this is what happens when a person takes the path of material living and material action. You become bound by it. You become conditioned by it. You become addicted to it and will tend to repeat the same things that are bringing you unhappiness. You will tend to repeat them because of the nature of this conditioning. And so the idea of transcending karma is just like, whoa, that's a, that's a massive idea if we think about it in the context of what we've been talking about. And so over the next couple of weeks, we're going to be looking at what were the prescribed ways, what were the avenues of action, of thought, of, you know, of, of how you can live to become free from these effects, to actually become truly free, to be truly liberated, to not be bound by all of these things, and to even become free from this massive storehouse of karma that we're always dragging around with us unseen. I, I, I like to refer to newborn babies. People look at these little cute little dudes when they show up, eh, you know. <laughs> I've just had another couple of grandkids and everybody's sending the pictures and everything. And they look at the little kids and People are holding them, it's you know, smelling them and kissing them. And, you know, it's just like, oh, it's so innocent and so pure. No, they're not. You don't know anything about that dude. You don't know where they came from. What kind of a body they had on 10 months earlier. Definitely you wouldn't like to be cuddling it. And <laughs> but now you've developed this intense 
you know, attachment. And, and that's, it's not bad. It's, it's a good thing. Otherwise, nobody would have kids and nobody would take care of them. So it's good that there is this nurturing spirit. But one should not be naive. They are not innocent and pure. They have shown up with a massive amount of baggage. You just can't see it. And during their lifetime, this baggage will be gradually unpacked and things will be visited upon them as if unasked. You know, they have this question, why, why do bad things happen to good people? This is why. It is a result of previous, previous bad action. There will be results that come. We're not sure when they will manifest and how they will be experienced, but they will come because it is unavoidable. So the need to rise above, to transcend, to go beyond these laws of karma are really important. And learning how to make really, really good decisions in life, to chart a course that produces wonderful outcomes is really what we need to be doing as human beings. In lower species of life, there is no such choice. One simply acts impulsively by the dictates and the desires of the body. In the human form of life, we have this unique capacity to begin to ask questions, to become masters of our own destiny to begin to learn how to set a course and work towards that which is true freedom, true happiness, and real spiritual love. Okay? That's it, folks. Any question? How do you decide? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. How do you decide a good karma and a bad karma? How do you decide? Desire. Decide, decide, decide. Good karma or bad karma? Decide. Decide. Huh? Decide. 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 Hmm. Okay. Main point is we should not be desiring or focused on trying to create good or bad karma. We should be trying to not have any karmic reaction, to live a life where there is no karmic reaction. Because even what is considered good actually is not truly good. Even you get all the goodies. You, you have a, a, a life of plenty and everything. During that Time, you are engaging in activities that will bind you to the material world, that will make it so that you stay on what was called in, in ancient terms as samsara. This was the cycle of repeated birth and death that just goes on and on and on endlessly until one comes to this position of not um, becoming completely free from the bonds of karma. Now, problem, when you desire material things, it conditions you to further desire. If you receive something that you consider good in your life, it builds an attachment and a stronger desire to have this again and again and again. And so what you're doing is conditioning yourself to repeatedly act in a way that will bind you to this world. And being bound to this world, just because of the influences that are here, you will sometimes engage in activity that is good, and you will sometimes engage in activity that is bad, both of which will bind you, whether it's golden chains 
or iron chains, you're still chained in the dungeon. We need to be outside. We need to be in the fresh air. We need to be experiencing something far more wonderful. Is that okay? Did that answer your question or no? You wanted to ask? Yeah, basically, uh, my question is, uh, let's say I worship Krishna all the time, okay? And I think I'm doing the right karma, okay? And you what? I'm worshiping Krishna yeah. or God all the time, and I think I'm doing the right karma. But at the end of the day, I, I need to live in the material world, right? I cannot yeah. uh, fill myself or I can't go to the God, right? So, uh, in this material world, I need to do certain things which require material, right? So, yep. Yeah. So, so not, I'm going to understand how can I get rid of my... Okay. So, I'm going to have to ask you to come next week. <laughs> and if you can't, then take a look on, on Facebook. We'll be putting the talks up. Because it's a big topic, we can't do everything at once. But just in brief, because of your background, this was the dilemma of Arjuna in the Bhagavad Gita. Arjuna was a warrior prince. And when confronted with this huge battle he was about to enter in, not because he was a coward, but because of a deep sense of pity for the people that were about to fight, many of whom he respected and were his elders and, and people that he loved, that he could not see any way that engaging in this battle was going to produce any good. And he desired to just run away to the mountains become what was called a sannyasi, just live in the, in the mountains. And of course he was told that if you artificially try to do this, you will not succeed because you already have a nature and you have a certain type of consciousness. And even though you run now, as time goes by, you will again be drawn back to this life, this type of living. And so there is a whole explanation of what was called karma yoga and sometimes described as buddhi, buddhi yoga. And this karma yoga was learning how to live in this world in a responsible way, taking care of duties and responsibilities, but having a whole new kind of consciousness and a new purpose for doing things. And one of the big lessons that we learn, the thing that makes something material or spiritual is not the action itself, but the purpose for doing it. And so we'll deal with that more next week and, and the week after. But it's a very good question and it's an important question. And I'm sorry if I cannot go too deeply just now. We don't have enough time. Thank you. Okay? Anything else? No? All good? Thank you very much. Yep. yep, that's good. So part of the process of transcending karma is this form of meditation. Meditation is actually about immersing ourselves in transcendence and that which is spiritual or transcendental. And it has this purifying effect on the heart and the mind. And it actually gradually, bit by bit, begins to transform us and begins to alter the way that we do look at the world, 
that we do look at life, that we consider what are the actual options.
あるように。